You know if I said people were gonna get mad at me for my last video? Well, it's true, but I never would have guessed that those people would be me. You explain that whole You messed out. it up. Way too complicated. You're confusing people. You went way too fast. Yeah. People don't get it. You. Because you didn't explain it right. This is me, I'm so royal. Last video on dry and moisturized hair actually went over way better than I expected. You guys were super supportive and asked amazing questions. Today, we're gonna go through the top 12 questions you guys asked. First, quick little recap. We do not need to try and add more water to our hair or seal water in. Hair that feels dry isn't actually dry. It needs conditioning. Also, needing to balance protein and moisture is a myth. They're not opposites, they're both build up. So now let's answer your questions. Number one, and your most frequently asked question, what is conditioner? The main goal of conditioner is to make it easier to comb through your hair. One of the main ways it does that is by making hair more slippery by lubricating it. If I would just use the word lubricating instead of conditioning, it would have cleared up a lot of your questions. I just didn't use that word because it's sometimes associated with other things. It also closes the cuticle, which protects the inside of the hair, and it keeps the cuticles from catching on each other. A lot of you also wanted to know not just like what conditioner does, but what is it? Dr. Robbins actually talked about the six main groups of things that go into making a conditioner. First, oily and waxy ingredients. These are your slippery, slidey ingredients. They might be actual literal oils or waxes. They might be silicones, might be fatty acids. Number two is ingredients with positively charged ions. Basically, because of the pH of hair, positively charged ingredients are attracted to it. That's as far into it as we really need to go. Number three, this goes right along with everything we've been talking about, are substances that make ingredients that repel water stick to the hair. Number four, just ingredients to make the conditioner thicker. Five, ingredients that adjust the pH. And then six, colors and preservatives. So that's generally what you're gonna find in most conditioners. Number two, if my hair isn't dry, then what is it? What's causing the problems? This short quiz will help you figure it out. Have you bleached your hair? Have you chemically straightened or curled your hair? Do you frequently use heat to style your hair? Have you used permanent dye on your hair? Has your hair been exposed to a lot of sunlight without UV protection? Does your shampoo have a high pH level? If you don't know, I have a video on that. Have you used DIY hair treatments without checking the pH? Do you often tease your hair? Do you brush or comb your hair roughly or yank through knots? Do you rough up your hair with a towel while it's wet? Do you have a puppy who thinks your hair is a chew toy? Let no, no, ma'am, no. Do you live in a very humid climate? Does the weather in your area change frequently? Do you style your hair with heat? Is the air in your home a lot drier than the air outside? If your hair is curly, do you straighten it often? And if it's straight, do you curl it often? Do you use a loose shower cap or one made from a material that lets moisture easily get to your hair? If you said yes to questions in purple, you probably have hair damage. Everyone has some amount of damage just from grooming and normal wear and tear of just living life. Side note, if you've used DIY hair treatments and didn't check the pH, that doesn't necessarily mean you for sure have hair damage from it. It's just an increased risk. So if damaged hair is your problem, hair cannot heal itself. But there are three things here that you can do. First, try to avoid future damage. For way more details on how to do that, check out the split ends and hair breakage video. Number two, you can try treatments like Olaplex or different bond builders that seek to at least temporarily repair some of those bonds that hold your hair together. And number three, you can look for products that attempt to hide the damage. But this can be anything from conditioners, split end treatments, masks, even oils can at least temporarily give your hair that smooth, glossy look. If you said yes to questions in blue, you're probably getting frizz from humidity. People love to call frizzy hair dry, even though a lot of times frizz is caused by too much moisture. If you want to avoid frizz, I've got some solutions for you. First, if you blow dry, try using a blow dryer that has anti-frizz technology. Number two, use anti-frizz products. They're not perfect, but they can help slow water from getting into your hair, which helps your hairstyle hold longer. Number three, if you answered that it's considerably drier inside of your house than it is outside, you might wanna try getting a humidifier. The change in humidity from when you're inside to when you go outside is gonna cause lots of water to come rushing into your hair. So if you can keep the humidity level inside your house about the same level it is outside your house, you're not gonna have that instant poof when you walk outside. Four, if you're an avid shower cap user, make sure you've got one that fits well and try one made from materials that are designed to keep the moisture away from your hair. 
And finally, number five, in areas with extreme humidity or extreme weather changes, try not to fight your natural hair shape. In the most humid places, you are not going to win that battle. On your tropical vacation, don't flat iron your hair pin straight unless you have naturally very straight hair. And if it's naturally straight, it's not gonna hold a curl in that humidity. So just embrace what grows out of your head. If damage and humidity aren't your problems, your hair probably just needs more conditioner. Things to make it a little bit more slippery slidey and also close those cuticles. If your cuticles are blown open, it can definitely give you that feeling that people describe as dry. A lot of people think of conditioner just as a thing that you use in the shower after shampoo. But that rinse out conditioner probably isn't enough. You may also wanna use a leave-in product because they actually stay in your hair. You're more likely to get more noticeable results. Question number three, so what? People are just using the wrong words who cares? Yes, people use the words dry and moisturized wrong, but that's not the problem. The problem is that people completely misunderstand what their hair needs and how it works. So if Janice over here doesn't understand why her hair is doing something, but then she tries to fix it, she's just throwing darts blindfolded. It might work, it might not. In the case of dry hair, her entire idea of what is causing the problem is completely backwards. So there's a good chance she's gonna keep going further and further in the wrong direction until she does serious damage to her hair. I can't even imagine the stress of trying harder and harder to fix something and then every day just watching it get worse and worse. That's why I make these videos. If I can help you or somebody else avoid that pain, it's all worth it. Number four, does drinking more water get more water in my hair? And will eating healthy foods like proteins or fats make my hair healthier? Making sure that you're properly nourished is important for forming your hair initially. You need nutrients for the cells that are going to become your hair, but once those cells turn into hair, they die. Literally the process of turning into hair kills them. So any hair that you see outside of your body, it's, it's too late, it's formed. And nothing that you eat or drink is going to change it. People sometimes think that hair is like a plant because it grows, but it only gets longer because your body keeps pushing out more dead cells. Number five, are my moisturizing hair products bad and I've been wasting my money? No. Just because your hair doesn't need moisture doesn't mean you shouldn't be using any of those products that are labeled as moisturizing. A lot of these things that these products do are still super important. Now that you know what's going on, you have a better idea of maybe which products you wanna be using more or less. But I just don't want you guys to think that it means like to throw all your products out the window that you don't need hair products. Number six, I already knew that moisturizer doesn't add water. Two or three people seem to think that the entire point of the video was that I was mind blown that moisture means water or that moisturizing products are just conditioners and don't actually add water. Just so we're super clear, the main point of the video is that your hair doesn't need more water. Hi, I know this is really weird and about a dog <laughs> really attached to me in the hood. I didn't want to get into this because I didn't want to upset any more people than I had to, but there's enough misinformation in the comments that we have to address this. A few people tried to tell me that I didn't understand the definition of moisturizing or that moisture refers to oil. No, that is a myth that comes from skincare. Moisture is water. It is a scientific term and it can be measured. Moisturization is not a real word. It's a word made up to sell people things. The first use of the word was in 1915 to sell chicken egg incubators that would keep the chicken eggs warm without cooking all of the water out of them. Because your skin needs oil to hold in water, most moisturizers and skincare both add water and add oil. But hydrate just refers to adding water. In either case, the goal of both moisturizing and hydrating is to keep the water concentration at a certain level in your skin. Your hair is not skin. You do not need it to have a certain concentration of water. 90% of YouTube videos will tell you something else, and I do not want you to take my word for it. Just because I or anybody says something convincingly that sounds logical doesn't make it true. And so I wanna share for you guys word for word what the experts say. Moisture in hair is a scientific or technical term determined by the amount or percentage of water in hair and it can be measured. On the other hand, moisturization is a consumerist term, not a scientific term. Secondly, we have the Journal of Toiletries and Cosmetics. Hello. This was written by Dr. Trevor Evans, who's spent the last 25 years studying the effects of water on hair. The comments and demands of hair care consumers appear puzzling. 
Consumers worry greatly about the drying out of hair and subsequently demand products that provide moisturization. However, many forms of damage actually lead to higher levels of water in hair. There is a definite disconnect between consumer language and scientific language, where an individual's self-prognosis and the technical root cause are indeed different. It is likely that this belief arises due to an analogy with skincare. A quick warning for you before we head back. The scientific sources that are in a lot of YouTube videos are just ads that have some sciencey words in them. Sometimes the videos that actually cite legitimate studies are even worse because they either are just reading the abstract or if somebody does read the full article, a lot of times they don't fully understand it. Number seven, what about humectants, occlusives, and emollients? Humectants are ingredients that attract moisture. They're popular in skincare because they can draw water from the air and keep your skin hydrated. Occlusives are ingredients that either seal water in or seal it out, like silicones or certain oils. People who think that their hair is like skin and that it needs hydration often make the mistake of trying to use these to trap water in their hair the same way that they would to trap water on their skin. Emollients in the hair care world are basically just conditioners. And sometimes, depending on the amount that's used, the same exact ingredient can be either an occlusive or an emollient. The only one of these that adds water to the hair are humectants. You'll find humectant ingredients in a lot of your styling products, but it's not usually because they're humectants. Many humectants also condition. Super, super, super important. How an ingredient acts alone is different than how it acts in an entire formula. For example, one of the most popular humectants is glycerin. People who formulate products add glycerin for a lot of reasons. It can help keep the product intact if you accidentally take it in freezing weather. If you see glycerin in a rinse off product, it's literally just going down the drain. You don't have to worry about it sitting in your hair and attracting moisture. And leave-in products, a lot of times it's only added for the feel, especially if you're just using a product that has a humectant in it. Depending on the formula, it might not even be doing what you think it does. You're more likely to run into trouble when people without an education in formulating hair care products start making their own DIYs. They may go overboard with the humectants and wind up causing their own bad hair days. Eight, what is moisture overload? Most of the time, what people think is moisture overload is just a buildup of conditioning products. Number nine, if this is true, why do some people get good results using the protein moisture balance method? Protein treatments can be a good thing for your hair. Conditioning treatments might be mislabeled as moisturizing, but they're also still good for your hair. Using too much of any product may cause buildup. Buildup of proteins feels rough and hard. Conditioning buildup is more soft and gummy. If you remember the over lipsticked lips example, it'd be like, oh, that's too cakey. It's all hard and crusty. So let me put some lip gloss over top of it to make it feel smoother. It may feel smoother, but it's not solving the problem. We really need to remove the buildup. A lot of people who follow this also do use a clarifying shampoo. So some people might still get good results. And you might think, well, if it works for some people, why does it matter if the reasoning behind it is wrong? If it always worked perfectly, then it, it wouldn't matter. But it matters a lot when it doesn't work. If something ever goes wrong and you try to fix the problem, there's a good chance your solution will be wrong if you're basing it on wrong assumptions. It can also get really dangerous with DIY. You can absolutely DIY things that will draw moisture into your hair. Combine that with how most people who make DIYs don't test the pH, they don't add the proper preservatives, and you can wind up with some extremely damaging hair smoothies. Number 10, what about such and such ingredient? A lot of you guys asked about specific ingredients. There's a really popular idea in both skincare and hair care right now that ingredients don't lie. They don't necessarily lie, but they can be extremely misleading. Ingredients list started as a way to warn people who have allergies and sensitivities. It was never meant to give us the full picture. Not only do ingredients come in dramatically different qualities, but also, like we said earlier, how an ingredient acts by itself is different than how it acts in an entire formula. You could take the same ingredient ingredients and make cake or cookies. You get something very different depending on how much of each ingredient you're using. You could go in your pantry and grab some vinegar. Now you could also pull out your first aid kit and pull out some peroxide. It's found in nature. It's water with an extra oxygen molecule. But when you add vinegar and peroxide, you get something called parasitic acid. So two previously harmless things are now a corrosive acid. 
without knowing the quantities and qualities. People who are chemists and it's their entire job to formulate products can't look at an ingredients list and tell you everything about that product. So for us normal people who don't have a PhD in chemistry, it's kind of silly for us to be nitpicking, acting like we know what a product is like just because of the ingredients. Does that mean you shouldn't look at an ingredients list? No, you can still kind of get the gist of what a product is about, but you don't know how it's gonna work until you try it. Just because you had a bad experience with an ingredient by itself or even in another hair product doesn't mean that you should avoid that ingredient unless you're allergic or have a sensitivity to it. You might be missing out on so many products that could be fantastic for your hair if you refuse to use any product with a certain ingredient. Number 11, does this work for 4A, B, and C hair? These hair types chemically are similar to all the other hair types, so the same principles apply. From a physics standpoint, there's a huge difference because of the curls themselves and because the hairs have an elliptical cross section. We've talked in other videos about how if you have curly hair, you need to comb or detangle it while it's wet. This is still true. If you have very coily hair, you already know that you have complexities that you have to deal with that other hair types do not. I do my best not to share too much of my own opinion and stick to sharing the results of scientific studies. All of the literature that I've read indicates that all of this applies to coily hair as well. But I also know that not enough studies include your hair type. It's not right that the hair that needs studying the most has been studied the least. I hope that changes, and it does look like the beauty industry is finally starting to acknowledge the existence of people who don't have straight hair. But either way, I'll continue to do my best to share things that are valuable for you. Finally, number 12. I think I see what I don't need to do, but what should I be doing? If it's not broken, don't fix it. Continue to use conditioning products that work for you. It doesn't matter if they're labeled moisturizing. However, now that you understand what's happening, you're better prepared to experiment with new things. Number two, if you're using a humectant, things like aloe vera, honey, glycerin, it may be totally fine, but if you keep using them because your hair is frizzy and it's not getting better, consider cutting them out or replacing them with something else, like something that doesn't draw water to it. Number three, if you're getting buildup either from conditioning products or protein sticking to the outside of your hair, try a clarifying shampoo. Just keep in mind these aren't meant to be used all the time and make sure you do follow it up with a conditioner. Four, if you used to think that your hair was dry and needed more water, you need to figure out what your actual problem is. This is where you can use that quiz from earlier. And finally, learn to love your hair and don't compare. We tend to want what we don't have. A lot of times our worst hair days will happen when we're trying to style our hair in a way that is very unnatural to us. So if you ever wish that your stick straight hair was curlier or that your curly hair was straighter, remember there's someone with an opposite hair type of you that wishes their hair was a little more like yours. So those are the answers to the questions that you guys asked. If you have more questions, please leave them in the comments. I think I'm a weird YouTuber for replying to as many of the comments as I do. I literally spend most of the day after I post a video replying to comments. If you don't have a question, I still wanna hear from you. So tell me, what other YouTube channels are your favorites? Not meaning that mine's one of your favorites, I just mean like out of other channels, what do you watch? If you want more videos like this, poke the subscribe button and ring the little bell if you want those to come right to you. Time for a shout out. I'm glad you found my not an expert, but nerdy, excessive, answer seeking, relatable. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <gasps> you poo-pooed in the middle of the floor. Hunty. You're so cute, why are you so cute? You're upset because you want to go to bed, but you don't like to go to bed if I'm awake. I have bunsy pants on. There's a little bunsy faces.